In evolutionary biology, what people are often looking for are what's sometimes referred to as missing links, and we find them all the time in Fossil Lake. Well, I'm Lance Grandy, and I'm uh, what's known as the Distinguished Service Curator at the Field Museum of Chicago, and uh, I just published a book called The Lost World of Fossil Lake, Snapshots from Deep Time. This is a 52 million year old community that's just beautifully preserved fossils in southwestern Wyoming today in what's now the high mountain desert, but 52 million years ago was a tropical hotbed of evolution. It's a great uh, sample of what North America and, and the world in fact looked like between the extinction of the dinosaurs 65 million years ago and uh, the present day. It's a perfect combination of preservation, where the conditions and chemistry of this lake were just right, so everything is beautifully preserved. Um, we can see the early evolution of parrots, for example. We can see bats that were day flyers. We even have examples of fossilized sex and birth. I mean, we have stingrays that are preserved in mating positions and with embryos inside of them. Paleontology was a young science in the 1850s, and uh, the first scientists to explore the area were um, Cope and Marsh. There have been books written about the so-called bone wars, which were uh, basically the competition between these two really well-known scientists. It was a messy thing, but again, thanks to um, the productivity of, of both of the scientists, history remembers more their vast accomplishments. Fossils in of themselves aren't really worth much of anything scientifically unless you can put them into some kind of context that gives you a greater picture about where we came from and the evolution of the planet. We find animals all the time that are completely new to science. Just the other day, we began looking in more detail at a small mammal that fell into the lake, and it's the earliest mammal that has a prehensile tail. What was unexpected is it's a carnivore. So we had carnivores swinging around in the trees back then. It was a different world, and, and I guess that's why I think of it as a lost world. Based on what is there that I can see, there's probably enough for 100 lifetimes still there. So it's also one of the world's largest fossil deposits, in addition to being one of the most productive and uh, interesting. So it's got everything going for it, as far as I can see.